All righty. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Take a moment, pull your hands from the keyboard, let the market work out. I have Tracy from Hill Tower. Now, let me make sure I get it. Hill Tower <laughs> Resource Advisors, because you are the gal that knows darn near everything when it comes to the resource world, when it comes to, I mean, we have a little chat about copper, nickel, palladium and everything lately. But Tracy, this is the thing with the market so far. We're in a seasonality style market going into the spring summer trade on this, but we're not really seeing what I would call an exponential move within any of the metal. I mean, gold had its little seasonal drop off there, but eh, it is what it is. And gas itself, oil, the spreads are a little tight right now at best you know i mean that's that's a bit there's not a lot of movement overall with things so what are you seeing within the market where are you finding some edge here i mean i think right now where and we kind of talked about this before where energy was kind of the darling of like the last two years um i think really what we're going to see pick up this year particularly in h2 is provided we're not in a recession is i think we're really going to see that those those base and industrial metals pick up. And that's kind of a China reopening story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're already seeing, if you look and you look today, you know, you have got palladium up, you've got platinum up, and you've got copper up, and you've got iron ore up. And so that's kind of bucking the trend of the other markets. And particularly in light of the fact that, you know, the dollar is up today. Generally, that gen pushed the kibosh on metals, right? And so I think that markets are looking through that. Now, copper's got kind of a double-edged thing right now, actually. First, quantum halted exports in Panama uh, because they're having problems there. So that is contributing to some of that move today. But overall, still, copper has been very strong in light of the fact you know, that really the dollar has been rising from those, you know, from that what recent low of like 99, 100, right? So we're, you know, up four bucks, but we've just seen copper and iron ore kind of power through that. And so that kind of gives you, you know, to me that says that this is based on actual fundamentals, these moves. And I think a lot of that, again, has to do with China. Um, if you look at iron ore, for example, um, there, you know, that price is up in China over 63% from the low in November. And that coincides along with their imports, you know, almost triple <laughs> um, since, since that low, you know, where we saw no activity. So we know that China is looking to uh, pour a bunch of money into infrastructure projects, probably some more Gulf cities to kind of spur the... Yeah. <laughs> Spur, spur the market, um, but for whatever reason, you know, and, and I think that they're looking up the, um, their uh, sales for EV vehicles was very poor towards the end of the year, kind of dropped off. And so I think they'll be looking to kind of push that production and push that up now that we are seeing um, this reopen happen. Again, you know, I think it's a longer term trade. Um, I think really what, what, what you're really going to see the move again is in the back half of, of this year. But, you know, if you're looking at equities and things like that, you know, I would suggest maybe kind of looking at some of these miners that have been so beat up because I think they'll perform well over the long haul. Hmm. So over the long haul with that, what time of time horizon are you looking at for a, a lot of these trades? Are we talking a six month uh, running into next year? I mean, we, we've seen even with the U.S. government announcing with Nevi and the rest of their projects that, hey, we've got to get EV out here, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's the whole fast charge. But at the end of the day, unless we bring out some other type of way to conduct electricity to come through on a mass scale, I mean, copper's the thing. Copper is going to be the thing, and it's been the thing for a while. So I, I'm really, you know, myself, I, I've kind of have a small YOLO on the five-year copper outlook of, you know what, yeah. with everything coming through, why wouldn't I? Because of the, and maybe I'm wrong, because to the best of my knowledge, besides them doing salt water or something else, we're not exactly going to be driving around in cars that have a salt water battery in them or anything like that. So what are your thoughts as far as time horizon and how do you feel about both domestic and international aspect of the EV putting demand on this metals industry? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is going to be a multi-year trend. And so I think looking out five years is absolutely realistic, could be even longer. And, you know, I think we're just starting to see, I mean, metals have been, again, metals have been really beat up. They've been a laggard, um, you know, whereas we saw energy, you know, again, over the last two years, we had a big push on energy. And, you know, I think energy prices are higher for longer, but, you know, we could be kind of range bound for a while after these, you know, these huge moves in the last two years. Um, and so I think really, again, the opportunity I see is in some of these base and industrial metals, particularly in battery metals, um, you know, over over the next, you know, five to seven year time horizon. Sure. What do you think about companies like uh, Panasonic, et cetera, doing their development? I mean, we even saw where Kodak, uh, to be quite frank, until I heard that news the other year, I completely forgot about Kodak overall. Right. The fact that they went, hey, we're going to pivot because we know chemicals and all that from their color chroma to be able to, to do battery manufacturing. Do you think we're going to start to see a lot of companies start to... I hate to say, it, but pull a dot com aspect and go, hey, we're a battery person, we're an EV person, and we start to get into that bubble again. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I, I bet I definitely think that you will see that. I mean, you already have established battery makers, but you know, once you know, I think once these companies that are making these batteries really start to turn a profit, and I think you know, people will jump. It's like everybody jumped on the, you know, we had the dot com, and then we had the blockchain, right? Yeah. And now any company that mentions AI is <laughs> suddenly a darling, right? And so I'm sure that we will, there will be at some point where you see a bunch of people trying to jump into the battery game. Now, whether they are successful at that or not, compared to the people that have been doing it for years, it's a completely different story. But um, hmm. I, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> so as a as a trader on this aspect of it, what miners have really piqued your interest? Because when I look at miners, I don't just look at the mining company, but I also look at what entails them. Caterpillar, Komatsu, and then also 3M as well, because they provide a lot of the supplies to these miners to get the job done. Maybe I'm a little off tilt with that. Is how no, I, th I think you can. The yeah, I think trade? yeah, I think you can look at peripheral companies too. Uh, companies like Cleveland Cliffs, right? Yeah. Um, companies, um, you know, I, I I am vested in a lot of miners, copper miners, but, you know, I think that there'll be per peripheral companies, you know, I even think like, I even think X looks kind of interesting. If, really? if, if, if this, you know, supposedly this inflation reduction act is already in the works, right? Well, it went into effect January 1st. So that remains to be seen, but if there's funneling all these, all these, all this money into projects of railroads and new bridges and, and things of that nature, um, and they want a domestic steel, X. <laughs> I mean, I've got it. I would think between X and uh, something that I was curious about, though, we've seen where ExxonMobil and several other petrol manufacturers on there are trying to go to EV, but U.S. oil, I mean, it's in their name. Don't get me wrong. I don't think oil is going to go anywhere because we need it for a whole bunch of other base products. But how does a company like that, that is literally oil in the name, they're known for it, pivot? Well, I don't, I don't think they're necessarily going to pivot. You know, I mean, even if we see, if we looked at earnings just of the majors, um, that are happening, you know, what we saw really is BP wasn't making any money from their renewables and they decided to scale down how much they were going to invest. Shell said the same thing. They lost a bunch of money on renewables. So I think these companies, these oil companies that are also trying to be renewable companies, they're starting to lose money on these renewables. And, you know, they have decided to cut back on, you know, percentage of CapEx that they are going to allocate to these, at least, you know, what they said in, you know, what they said in their earnings calls, you know, at least, I think at least for the next year. And so um, I think oil companies are kind of realizing that, um, you know, oil is where it's at. I mean, literally, well, the numbers just came out. We surpassed an all-time high in December of almost 102 million barrels per day globally, and that's an all-time high. So 
all this EV push, and we're still consuming more oil than we ever have before, globally speaking. And so I just don't think that's going away. And I think, um, you know, BP kind of took a hit earlier because of the renewables, and they looked at a company like Exxon, who really has stayed tried and true to the oil industry and has kind of outperformed them. So um, I think that we are starting to see a little bit of a walk back from these companies. And that's not very surprising, staying core to their business, knowing that's not going away anytime soon. Um, globally, we're still expected for uh, consumption growth to continue higher. In fact, I think the IEA even said their prediction was 4 million barrels per day for 2023 and 2024 increase. And that's a lot of oil. And that's so that's a lot of oil. It, it <laughs> is. It's a lot of oil. And I think that that the supply demand, I know right now, um, you know, oil's kind of sideways. It's also kind of not the season for oil. We kind of need to move into spring. But um, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of people have been watching the oil market and saying, wait a minute, you know, the supply demand's not really correlating, right? Because you know, we're seeing an increase. Um, globally in consumption. And the, at the same time, numbers came out as production globally was reduced 234,000 barrels per day. And so I think that is eventually going to catch up. And I do think we'll see higher oil prices later. Um, but again, you know, in the $70, $80 range is still very high, um, traditionally speaking. And so, um, I, you know, I, oil companies are making a lot of money <laughs> in that range. Uh, well, anyway. I mean, I, I made the joke about it beforehand. We were looking at Exxon's earnings and Exxon themselves brought in more money than the church because there was the joke about oil's making more money than God. And I looked it up and actually, yeah, they were making more money than God by about $3 billion. <laughs> like, actually, was, they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was a lot of money. But tra okay, Tracy, I want to be respectful of your time overall. So my last question for you, talk to me about emerging markets. I'm seeing so many different things come across my desk when it comes to India, et cetera. And they're not just buying oil. They're buying plastics. They're buying this, that. And that's why I mentioned to our, our community beforehand about looking at companies like waste management, et cetera, that actually sell our trash that these countries then go through, sift through to create their raw goods because due to supply chain issues, for some reason, we can still ship garbage much easier than we can just get the raw material in. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a logistics person for that one. Right? But talk, talk to me overall on emerging yeah, markets. How are you I feeling? Mean we're seeing a lot of money pour into emerging markets right now. I think we had the biggest increase um, in like, I, don't, I think it was 20 years. I posted a chart on it on Twitter, but um, so we're seeing a lot of inflows to emerging markets right now. Now, my only concern with that is that if we see another spike in the dollar and those emerging markets that hold dollar denominated debt are going to be in real trouble. And so uh, that's just something to be mindful of. Um, but it does seem to be, and a lot of hedge funds that I've talked to um, also seem to be really gung-ho about this emerging market um, trade right now. And so I think it's, I, I like it, but if you're if your pockets aren't as deep as hedge funds are, um, you know, I would really keep your eye on the dollar. Because again, if we have a do another dollar spike, that's going to be very bad for emerging markets. Yeah. Um, but overall, over the long term, I do like the trade because I think there's going to be, you know, a lot of growth in India. Although India is kind of expensive investment wise, has always kind of been. Um, but, um, you know, I, I still we're going to have a lot of growth in in those markets, India, um, China, we'll still see some growth, even though that's kind of lagging. And I don't, I don't know why it's still considered emerging markets. I feel like they emerged already, but <laughs> it's for some reason still categorized as, as, as an emerging market. And then I think you see some um, companies, especially or, or some countries, especially in Africa, that have um, a lot of battery metal production. Right. I think that will uh, really help them, too. So I think there's a lot of money or if you want to look at an, just an emerging market fund rather than try to find individual stocks, you know, that would be something to look at. Again, 
you know, I hate to keep repeating myself, but just walk, keep your eye on the dollar because no, it's an important aspect of it overall. And, and that's the thing too. I, I've been a little bit hesitant in, in, in any investments when it comes to Africa itself, just due to the bond crisis we had. What was it? Now, well, God, now it's been about 20 years, but still, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. man, the nineties were always 10 years ago to me. But with that being, uh, that being said, Tracy, how can people keep track of everything you've got going on? You have your hands in a lot of pots. And a lot <laughs> no, of I do. Well, yeah. I'm on Twitter at Shiral. Okay, and then I also write, uh, I have a sub uh, subscription uh, service with marketsinsiderpro.com that is an energy and materials weekly and it just covers energy and materials. I'm also um, doing stuff with at placeyourtrades.com. Um, I hold the spaces every Wednesday on Twitter um, from 11 to 12. You can check that out. Um, I also write a blog. I write a markets kind of a Sunday prep pre-market thing that is kind of general, general market related. And that's free. You can just go sign up for that. And then um, they are having a Vegas. I think I mentioned this last time. It's, there's one week left. They're, having, they're giving away. They uh, took to Vegas for the money show. And you can just go to placeyourtrades.com backslash Vegas. And uh, go sign up for, you know, register for a free trip. Uh, you have till I think the 28th of February, and then the winners picked March 1st. Awesome. I love it. All the relevant links will be in the description. Go, go check out her spaces as well. I've tuned in for a couple of those before, and uh, they are always awesome. With that being said, Tracy, thank you for dropping some great knowledge and thought points for the week on this one, and look forward to talking with you again on the next one. All right. See you next week.